Artists often interpret the customs of a people and the way they live. Here the artist is picturing a group of Seminole Indian people in the Everglades of Florida. What can he learn about the Seminoles? He may learn that some 600 Seminole people now live by themselves in the Florida Everglades, much like their ancestors. Seminole history begins about 1750, when members of the Creek tribe in Georgia went to Florida. The word Seminole means separatist or runaway. The totem pole is a religious symbol. It reminds the artist that Seminoles believe in magic spirits. A bird carved on the totem pole shows the family group or clan. These people are members of the bird clan. This totem pole looks much like an Aztec totem pole. It suggests that the Seminoles may be related to the Aztecs. The artist finds that Seminole villages are small, two or three dozen people and a few simple huts. Huts are built with a roof made of palmetto leaves. These keep out the rain. But the huts have no walls. Hurricane winds blow right through without causing damage. Floors are raised about three feet above the ground so the Seminoles are safe from snakes. These homes must be built on high ground, for this land is a wet prairie. Seminole people have moved along this endless highway for many years in dugout canoes, canoes dug out of huge cypress logs. Although new types of boats are being adopted, many old traditional ways of doing things continue, such as the washing of clothes, which are often beaten with a stick no washing machines or electricity here. Life is simple. Combing the hair is a favorite pastime among most women. Seminole women have long black hair. They usually comb it so it can be tied up in a pug or ball. Older women often cut the hair short so they have bangs. These ways of fixing the hair have gone on for a long time. Styles do not change very rapidly among Seminole women. To shade their face from the warm Florida sun, the women have learned to make use of a piece of stiff cardboard. The hair is combed over the edge of this cardboard. A net holds the hair in place. Seminole women are busy most of the day. They do a great deal of sewing. The women sew clothing and ornaments as well. Dolls that look like the Seminole costume are made to sell. The dolls are popular with tourists who visit trading posts along highways near this Everglade reservation. Seminole children, like other boys and girls, also enjoy playing with the dolls. There is unhappiness when children take things, but Seminole children will learn to share with others, to respect what belongs to others, and they learn well, for there is no stealing among these people. Most families own a sewing machine, these sewing machines, run by hand, 
are one of the main links between the white man's civilization and the Indian's culture. The women buy strips of brightly colored goods and sew them together into skirts and blouses. They make most of their own clothing. Basket weaving also is common in this Everglades area. There is very little clay here, but sweet grass is plentiful. So the Seminole, instead of making pottery like so many Indian people in southwestern United States, uses sweet grass to construct baskets. These baskets will hold food and other small household objects. One of their most artistic activities is glass bead work. These small beads are made into belts, bracelets, and other useful articles. Today, the beads are generally manufactured off the reservation, but in the old days, the Indian made them himself out of shells, bones, and fish scales. Women string their own beads. A great many strings are often worn around the neck. Sometimes the beads they wear weigh 18 or 20 pounds. But the Seminole people like these bright colors and find the beads very beautiful. The Seminoles are sensitive to beauty of many kinds. Jewelry is worn by both men and women. These pieces may be hammered out of silver coins. Such jewelry might be worn for special occasions, like the great feast called Shotke Ta, the feast of the green corn dance, celebrated each year about the 1st of July. While Seminole women are busy sewing or making baskets, the men like to hunt and fish. They have created a market for frogs, which are sold in the cities. With the money, they can buy cloth, a sewing machine, or one of the white man's boats. But until recently, the Seminole bought very little. He lived on the fish and wild game so plentiful in the Everglades. Mealtime brings the whole family together around an open wood fire. While the food is cooking, the family can talk about life today, or perhaps think back upon the history of their people. Food has been plentiful. The land was good, yet the Seminole heart was often sad. They have fought to stay on this land. The Seminoles have wanted to be left alone, to maintain their way of life, to believe in their God to follow tribal customs, to pull their dugout canoes, to hunt and fish in the quiet Everglades, to eat the kinds of food they prefer. The children will learn these ways from their parents. They will hear stories around the campfire. The old people will tell about brave men like Osceola, who led them in troubled times. But the young Seminole children today will also learn of another world, a world of new machines and strange customs. As the artist paints among these people today, he wonders, can the Seminoles continue living this way? Or will the Seminole way of life disappear as it comes more and more into contact with modern civilization?
Florida. The word Seminole means separatist or runaway. The totem pole is a religious symbol. It reminds the artist that Seminoles believe in magic spirits. A bird carved on the totem pole shows the family group or clan. These people are members of the bird clan. This totem pole looks much like an Aztec totem pole. It suggests that the Seminoles may be related to the Aztecs. What can he learn about the Seminoles? He may learn that some 600 Seminole people now live by themselves in the Florida Everglades, much like their ancestors. Seminole history begins about 1750, when members of the Creek tribe in Georgia Artists often interpret the customs of a people and the way they live. Here the artist is picturing a group of Seminole Indian people in the Everglades of Florida.